Hey there! You've landed on a basic video that talks about using FlexSeq by itself. There is an initial video out there that introduces the FlexSeq product line and talks about its functional uses. It's episode one in the FlexSeq Fridays playlist, in case you missed it. For those of you that have used FlexSeq, look at this as a thorough review for you. Before we get started, I want to remind you to make sure that you use clean surfaces and clean hands when you use the products because any excess in any of our products can be reused. So if you've got a clean surface, you can just gather it up and put it back into your container and, and reuse it. Good example of that is if you're working in, in the microwave and you have a spillage or an overflow, just let the product set up a little bit and then Gather it up, put it into your container, and reheat it, and you're ready to go for another shot. The FlexSeq jar itself contains uh, some packets, two packets, an A packet and a B packet. It's the only product in our product line that's deconstructed. So why is it deconstructed, you might ask? Got an answer for you. A couple of reasons. First of all, the product doesn't have as many preservatives in it. So we were a little cautious about sending it premixed and incurring a danger that might attract some bacteria in shipment. So while we were thinking and talking about the packaging aspects, one of our really close friends, Roland Cooper, who used to work for Amoretti, just looked at us and said, deconstruct it. Duh! Great idea. That's exactly what we did. So thanks, Roland. So the other reason that we have it deconstructed is that you can control how flexible your ultimate outcome is by the amount of the B packet that you include. If you want something a little less flexible, add just half of the B packet. If you want something even stiffer, add just a quarter of the B packet. I've got some examples to show you. But here is the product that's mixed with the full packet, full B packet, okay? Really flexible. Then you've got one that's mixed with half of the B packet. Still pretty flexible, but it has a little bit more rigidity so that maybe it'll hold its shape, like if you're doing bows or ribbons. And this one's only using a quarter of the B packet. Now you can see that it's pretty solid. You could probably punch the sequences out of it, but it's really applicable to situations where you want to do uh, windows for your car or windows for a house. You can, uh, it's clear, so it works well in that kind of application. You can also fill in uh, stained glass um, designs with that kind of FlexSeq that's colored. I've got a, a little example of a an ornament that's done that way. You can see that it's still pretty flexible, but it nicely retains its shape. The other thing that's in the jar is an easy set of instructions. One of the things that it suggests is starting out with a half a cup of water. Well, what we recommend is using some warm sterile water or distilled water. Various parts of the country and the world, for that matter, have different degrees of mineral content in the water, and that may affect the ultimate result. So if you use the water and your local water and there's no problem, keep going. If not, try some distilled or sterile water for your mix. Now, it says to use, add your, B, add your A packet powder to the half cup of water. You can actually use the jar to, to, to mix it in. We've got um, a nice little miniature whisk that works well in this scenario on FlexSeq.com and you can just mix it without, a, without an issue. According to the directions, you let it bloom and then you add your bee packet, however much you need for the application you're looking for. Warm it up and then you may find some bubbles that appear along the top. Just remove those bubbles and you're ready to go. That's the point in time when you want to add your color, flavor, and luster 
to the mix before you use it. For color, we use Artisan Accents, a concentrated color, gel color, that is true to color, a black is a black, and it doesn't fade. I want to show you that, but I've got to warm up some Flexique, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I warmed up some Flexique in a little silicone container. These are kind of cool. Um, now I'm going to show you that we're using some Artisan Accents Breakfast Blue. I'm going to add just a drop to the mix. Oh, I guess that's a little bit more than a drop. So it's going to be concentrated color, but you can see what I'm talking about. You mix it up and it absorbs very nicely. It um, melts, melds very nicely into the mix and you can then use it however you want. So, let me show you how to spread Flexique. There's a couple of different ways. You can use a spatula, you can use a brush, and you can use another technique to make it extra thin. I'm going to show you all of them. First of all, let's try using a spatula. A little bit. As you spread it with a spatula, unless you hold it extremely level, there's a tendency to not get an even thickness on it. So you want to spread it as thick or as thin as you need for the application you're using. So that's spreading it with a spatula. You can spread it with a brush. Just take it and move it from the center out. You get a little bit better thickness control. The potential issue with using a brush is if you're too aggressive, you could infuse a few bubbles into the mix. So, the third way, you know these acetate sheets that uh, are on the backing of icing sheets and things like that? You can get them at any kind of uh, office supply store. They're, they're overhead transparencies. Get one of those acetate sheets. Pour as much Flexic as you need for the size that you're looking for and just move it around. A couple of things that uh, are advantageous about this. First of all, you get absolutely no bubbles when you do that. Do it this way. You can see how clear that is. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing the whole sheet, but that kind of gives you an idea. Then you can just let it, you know, drip down the way you want, and it's it's pretty even, pretty clear. Then, if you let that dry for a day or two, a couple of days I would say, just to be safe, you can then put that into your edible printer and print on it so you have a clear background on a print. I actually did that with this sheet and printed a rose on it. You can see how that turned out. It's clear. Pretty clear, right? And I can take that off the acetate backing and then use it on a cake so that the colors of the cake come through. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that kind of neat? Okay. So, the other point, once you spread Flexic onto your mat, remember I said you can color it or flavor it before or after. In this case, we just spread it in its clear form. Now, you can luster it with some luster, which I've got here. I've got some 
Sugar Art New Silver luster that I put into the cap. I'm going to luster the Flex Seek that I have on the left side just to show you that it absorbs very nicely into the Flex Seek. The earlier you do this, the more it will absorb because it's a little tacky, so it'll absorb the, the luster very nicely. Okay? So that's luster. You can also use um, cornstarch for a matte finish. Okay, just dab the Flex Seek and it now is, has a matte finish. It does two things. It, it gives it shine or matte and it takes away the, the, the tackiness. Now what you want to do is trim it, right? Trim it while it's still attached to the sheet. The reason why you do that is it'll slide because it's no longer tacky when you flip it over. If you try cutting it after where you flip it over, it's going to slide all over the place. So cut yourself your border for it the way you need it. And then you can just take away the excess. Remember, you can reuse it by putting it into your container and remelting it. You don't want to do that with your lustered stuff because if you put the lustered stuff into the regular Flexeek, it's going to contaminate, not contaminate, but it's going to make it all lustery. So keep the lustered stuff on the side and the non-lustered stuff on the other side. So now I can take the lustered piece, turn it upside down, and I can either luster the back, if you're going to see both sides of it, luster the back. If not, I can just use the cornstarch puff and cornstarch the back side of it. And then what you have is a lustered finish on one side that's shiny and a matte finish on the other side that's not shiny. The other thing you can do if you don't want to cover it, if you want it in its clear form for whatever reason, you can try some Crisco, some shortening, and just very lightly get your fingers um, with some of the Crisco and spread that over the Flexeek that on the silicone mat and that takes away the stickiness. Then you can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So let me show you some of the things that we've done with Flexeek. First of all, I spread out some colored Flexeek and dusted it with some food grade jewel dust from confectionaryarts.com. It gives it a glittery kind of effect on one side. I left the other side clear so that that effect shows through. Interesting. I also then added some of that jewel dust to Flexeek and you can see that it's got a different type of effect. When you spread it out onto a silicone mat by itself, those particles show through very nicely, almost glitter embedded into the Flexeek. On this side, I've got a different effect. It's Flexeek with some Sugar Arts luster added to it, so it's got a sheen but it's got a slightly different sheen effect. So you can see you can add your color and your luster to your Flexeek before you use it or after you use it. It's up to you. Depends on what kind of effect you're looking for. Now if you wanted a, a clear color of the Flexeek without anything on it, Here's the blue that we mixed up earlier, used by itself. It's translucent. You can see through it, kind of. If you didn't want to see through, if you wanted it opaque, put some white in the mix first, and then add your color, and then you get more of an opaque look. 
can't see through it. Okay, so we talked about reusing any of the scraps, any of the cut borders that you cut, you can just put back in and, and reheat it and reuse it. So remember that we said that cold accelerates the setting. So you can put it in the refrigerator to, to accelerate the setting time if you need to. Also, the jar lid actually has a little warning on it that says refrigerate after mixing. Remember we talked about not being a lot of preservatives in the product. So if you put your container that you have your Flexic in into the refrigerator, we actually had it lab tested and it'll last without spoilage for up to two years, no problem. What we recommend is warm it up, pour it into ice cube trays, wait till they set, pop them out, put them into a Ziploc container, freezer Ziploc container, and put them in the freezer. They'll last indefinitely in the freezer. How do you attach it to the cake? Pretty simply, if the buttercream is soft, all you have to do is attach it to the buttercream and it'll stick very nicely. Fondant requires you to seal it first. Any gel product will draw water out of the fondant. So you want to seal it with some good piping gel or spray some edible lacquer spray on it or um, use Nicholas Lodge's uh, Super Bond, which is a beeswax kind of product which not only seals but acts as, an, as a glue. Otherwise you can use Flexique glue to attach any of the Flexi products to your cake. So that's it. Easy, right? Piece of cake, as they say. <laughs> if you haven't tried it yet, grab some today at Flexi.com or at your local retailer and give it a shot. As always, add any questions or comments that you have down below and uh, stay tuned for episode three, which will talk more about some additional uses for Flexi and some coloring options. See you there. Mm -hmm.